Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I will be showing you how you can make a power inverter based on the tier 4 and 4 IC with output regulation. The complete circuit schematics is as shown. So the heart of the project as I have mentioned is the tier 4 and 4 PWM IC which is a very fast and reliable passive modulation driver. So for the power supply it's powered by 12 volts and there's an input interference filtering capacitor. The tier 4 and 4 pinouts and all the connections are as shown. So I'll be using the air amplifiers for current sensing on the secondary side, feedback as well as the footage feedback on the secondary side. So first of all the power MOSFET are the IRF that 205. You can use any other power MOSFET but just ensure that the current is at least 30 amperes which can be handled. Also, the power MOSFETs determine the amount of power the inverter will output. With the power MOSFETs as shown, it can easily output more than 700 watts without any problem. So, the frequency of oscillation is determined by the formula, and the parameter set as 1 nanofarad and 10 kilo for the timing capacitor resistor. The frequency is 50 kilohertz, which is required for power transformers. So, the ground is pin 7 and VCC is pin 12. So connect the feedback pins to pin 2 through a 51 kilo ohms resistor. Connect the real time control pin to ground through this soft start network. So it ensures that the output PWM ramps up from 0% all the way to about 97% to minimize the stress on the power MOSFETs when the inverter is initially turned on. So there are feedback networks established by the resistors R4, R3 and R2. So the reference pin 5 generates, pin 14 I mean, generates 5 volts and if the parameters are shown, you will have about 1 volts and about 2 volts reference at the inverting terminals pin 15 and pin 2 of the IC, then an inverting terminals of the first air amplifier pin 1 and the second air amplifier pin 16, they are used for feedback. The way this works is, since Pin 13 is connected to 5 volts, the output transistors will be configured to operate as a push pull driver, and so they will be turning on in alternative version. When the first one turns on, there is a high pass at pin 9, and this will cause the MOSFET to want to conduct, and so current to flow from the 12 volts rail through this, the first half primary winding through the MOSFET that been ground. When it turns off and the second output transistor conducts, the second MOSFET will be turned on and current will flow through the other way in the primary winding into ground. R10 and R11 are the gate distance resistors which will ensure that the MOSFETs are turned off when the driving transistors of the IC they are not in operation. So the output is determined by the transformation ratio majority. On the output you can have either your AC which is a modified square wave or you can have your DC if you include this filter rectifier and filter section. So you can have two outputs, one for AC and the second for DC. The DC output can be adjusted for feedback as shown. The output voltage can be configured from 100 to 200 volts depending on the position of the potentiometer. So when the voltage across here gets to the reference voltage on the non-inverting pin of the air amplifier, the output PWM will be adjusted to compensate and it will set the output voltage at the desired amount. There is also current sensing on the secondary side, so you can modify this resistor to handle any different currents. Just ensure that the voltage developed here will be the one used for regulation of the second air amplifier. So here you have your high voltage AC or DC, and the PCB for the project look as shown. It's a tiny PCB. I think it measures just about eight and a half by six centimeters and this is the how the final build will look like so here you have your battery this is the IC and its mandatory biasing components the voltage adjustment potentiometer these are connections to the transformer primary and this is the feedback from the secondary this is the output feedback capacitor for the output DC voltage and this is the rectifier and the power MOSFETs if you want the inverter to handle more power, I recommend you mount the power MOSFETs on appropriate sized heat sinks to accommodate any heat generated when they are switching. With that being said, this marks the end of my tutorial. 
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to drop a like and comment. And most importantly, subscribe to my channel for more amazing projects and tutorials. And also, click the bell notifications icon to get updated immediately when I upload new videos. I wish you a nice time and I'll see you in the next episode.